Hey everybody, how are you doing? Welcome to another episode of Art with Miss Maureen. Today we're going to be working with an abstract drawing. You don't need a lot of materials for this. I think you probably have all of the things that you need and this is a make it work time. So we're going to just make it work with whatever you have. So for today's project, you're just going to need a piece of paper. I like to use white paper so that all the colors show up. You could use a pencil, you could use a marker. You can color this in with whatever you have. You could use watercolors. You could use colored pencils. You could use markers. You could use craft paint. Whatever you have, crayons work well too. Whatever you have, just use it and make it work. So I have a sheet that I'm gonna post. I'll post it in another, um, uh, I can't think today. <laughs> I'm going to post it on another page, another link. I'll also try to remember to post it in the comments. This is called the Abstract Art Challenge, and it lists the directions, and it also lists the prompts that you're going to do. This is a really fun thing to do by yourself when you have a few minutes. It's also really fun to do with a bunch of um, family members. You could also do this virtually with your friends. Because the fun thing is if one person reads the prompts and everyone is doing their art without looking at other people, at the end, it is absolutely amazing to see the differences that you will get. It's just a really fun thing to do and it's also a great exercise for design. So the very first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take a piece of paper and you're gonna cut it into, I'm gonna cut two pieces of paper up you're going to cut it into different squares because you're going to make your own deck of cards. If you have colored paper, that's even better because then you'll have a pile for the shapes and you'll have a pile for the line designs. It doesn't matter if these are perfect. It doesn't matter how many you make. Just cut up a bunch of papers and see where it takes you. So I'm making two piles. There's one pile. I'll just cut up a bunch here for a second pile. On these, you're going to draw different lines and different shapes. Remember that you can get as creative as you want. You can also divide this task up. So on this first paper, I will just do some shapes. I can do simple shapes like circles, ovals, triangles, heart. I can even make up shapes. I'm gonna call this one my fried egg shape. Just a wiggly shape. So really anything will do. Here is a trapezoid shape. The idea is to just kind of have some things that you can use to get your mind moving in ways that maybe it doesn't normally move. Sometimes when we draw, we get stuck in these ruts and we don't always try different things. So on this pile, I'm making different types of lines. It could be straight, it could be zigzag. Even within those lines, there's so many options. A zigzag line could look more like a lightning bolt. A wavy line could look more like the ocean. It could also look more like an ocean in that direction. A straight line could be thin. It could be a thick straight line so I could just double it up. It could also be a dashed line. And here's the fun thing about things you already know. Letters and numbers are just what? They're just lines put together. So the you can use, oops, that's my chisel tip. I'm gonna use my pointed tip. So I could put a letter A down and that could be in my line pile because it's just a series of straight lines put together. Just a fun way to create art. It may be in a way that you haven't done before. So now I have my shapes and I have my lines. I'm just gonna shuffle them up a little bit. I'm gonna leave them face down and I'm gonna get out my piece of paper. Now you're gonna look at your art challenge sheet and you're gonna read it. It says, choose a far card from the line pile and draw that line starting at the very edge of one side and continue it in any direction to the other. So I chose a straight line. So I'm just gonna pick one edge. I can do this right in pencil or in marker. 
I'm going to go right off the other edge. It says to continue this as many times as you want so that you have your paper divided up into a, a bunch of different shapes. So I got a curvy line. So again, from one side to the other, I'm gonna just keep picking lines. Here's a thick line. Again, from one side to the other. And every time you do this, you're gonna come up with a different design. It's gonna make you stretch your imagination and use your design skills. And your design skills are important even when you're drawing realistically because it really helps you to make interesting compositions. I'm gonna do one more, a dashed line. And now I have my paper divided up into a bunch of different spaces. I'm gonna choose a different color just so that you can see what I'm doing. You could use as many different colors as you want as you're doing this, or you could just do it all in black from the beginning. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so now I'm on step three. Choose a shape card. Fill out one of your spaces with a pattern made from the shape. The pattern could be just repeating the same, pattern is just repeating the same shape over and over again. You can have them all the same size. So on another piece of paper, I'll show you. It could just be circles in a row. It could be scattered circles in different sizes. Big, little, big, little, big, little. It could be circles inside of each other. So push yourself to think of different ways to use it in a way that you've never done before. I really like that one. So I'm gonna do that pattern. I'm gonna choose one of my spaces and I'm just gonna fill that space with that pattern. Getting a little dizzy looking at all these circles. My cat is not joining me today. I know that it's been fun having my cat around. I hope you made the earlier lesson this week a hat for my cat, or maybe you made it for your own pet. So there's my step four, uh, step three. Step four says next choose a line card. Okay, choose a line card. Make it fill the space, the entire space by going from edge to edge. So if I were to fill in my zigzag line from here, I could just go straight through the middle, but I'm gonna start in the corner and I'm gonna go all the way from the top to the bottom of that space because I like the way that it's making all of these triangle shapes because I can fill those with different colors. I could go back and put patterns in them. So much that I could do. Step five, choose another shape card. Make it large in the middle of another space. Add to it so that it is interesting. So here's my triangle. I put it right in the middle. So I can do anything. This is like doodling. I can make little lines that come out from it. I'm not using the prompt cards from this. I'm just now using my imagination. Maybe I'm gonna put another little triangle in it. Maybe I'll outline it. And then I think I'll divide up the rest of the space with just some lines. Again, I like to have these spaces because these are opportunities for me to do different colors. Step six, choose from either the shape or the line pile. Fill it with, fill a space using that as different sizes. So I'm gonna choose the line, I got the letter A. So I'm gonna fill up a space now and it's gonna be all different sizes, some big, some small. I like to <coughs> even do them in different directions because that keeps it fun and fresh. So there's my letter A's. I'm gonna just keep filling them in because I like them. A is for Alexa, that's my oldest daughter. Or apple, or asparagus, or orangutan. Oh, I think that might start with a no. <laughs> there, check, there it gets spell check. 
So now it says if I still have spaces to fill that I can either repeat steps three, four, five, or six, or I can make up your own. So if you really like using the prompts, let's continue to use those. Here is a trapezoid. Some of you might have to do some, well, that's a wonky trapezoid. That's okay. Some of you might have to be doing these in your geometry for your online classes right now. Geometry was actually one of my favorite maths, maybe because of all the shapes. Calculus, whoo, I don't know how I got through that one in high school, but somehow I made it through. Okay, so I still have a couple of spaces. I think I am just going to make up my own designs at this point, just so I can show you how to fill in the spaces. You can even color some things in. It does say that on step eight, it's good to thicken some lines. So if you did this with black, you could just come back with your black. I started with blue. So I'm gonna start thickening some of my lines and it also says to color some things in. And that's just to make it more interesting. Whenever you have variety, it just makes your design more interesting. I had a professor in college and I say this all the time, Dr. Schantz, you're one of my best professors in college. I had him for 2D design and he said, variety is the spice of life. I never forgot it. I say it all the time to my students and he's, it's just true. You need variety. You can't eat pizza every single day the rest of your life. At least I can't. So I'm just thickening up. It doesn't need to be every single line. I'm just thickening up a few. And you could see, look how much more interesting that is when it has thick and thin lines. Your eye is drawn to different things. It helps to move your eye throughout the picture. And then I could continue to fill some things in. Again, if you didn't want to use markers, you could at this point fill it in with paint. I outlined this with Sharpie and then I filled it in with acrylic paint. I love to do these exercises. I think it's really good for your imagination. So here's a few of the other ones that I've done. And every single time you do this, it looks different. And that's the really amazing thing is you never know what's inside your brain until you give it a chance to use, to use all of those thoughts in there. So remember to have fun, enjoy each other, be kind, and please show me some of your pictures. I love to see your faces. I love to see your art. It keeps us all together as, a, as an art community and it makes everybody happy to see smiling faces. So enjoy and that's it for Art with Miss Maureen. Thanks for tuning in.